Good morning. It is day 134. I don't know. The days are... They're going by fast. Um, it's also my brother's birthday. I gotta call him. I'll wait till he wakes up. Although he's probably driving to work now. But heading to over Mariah, another 4,000 footer. Yesterday recap, um, did Wildcats. D did not go A, I kind of missed that spur. I wouldn't probably have done it anyhow. Um, and then did Carter Dome, South Middle and North Carter, as well as Mount Height. Height's not a 4,000 footer, but it had pretty much great views. So that worked, that was nice. Um, and landed in the Imp campsite in New Hampshire where there's a privy and a shelter, tent sites, and a bear box they call a campsite. And they charge money for the campsite. Everywhere else, they just call it a shelter and they don't charge for it. So I thought that was interesting. But it is, um, there's a caretaker at each campsite. So I guess that's, that's what we're paying for. Um, somebody to answer questions, I, I guess, uh, and collect our money. But either way, I'm not, I'm not worried about that is what it is. Um, but I do have a gripe. We have a whole bunch of southbounders coming through. Granted, they've come, they've come over 300 miles, so that's, you know, they're hardy, and they're getting their trail legs, and they're doing some of the toughest terrain on the AT. Um, but I don't think they quite understand shelter etiquette as, <clears throat> I mean, it it got dark. It was almost 10 o'clock. People were still talking outside, like right outside the shelter. People were talking to each other inside the shelter, like in their beds. And it just, it makes for a very uncomfortable environment because, you know, people who have gotten up and worked all day don't want to come back, lay in their bedroom, what is their bedroom, and have people talking that they don't even know in their bedroom. Whew. So that's me falling. Um, so it was just, and nobody's going to confront them. I got close to confronting them, and that was when they came inside the shelter and they all went to bed. The other thing is they're using red the red light, which is the appropriate light on your headlamp, but everybody's looking around as they're using their headlight, so they're shining it in everybody's eyes um, as they make their way to bed. Uh, <clears throat> or, this is the gripe continues, or they haven't even set up their bed. They come to bed at 10 o'clock and spend the next 10 minutes inflating pads, you know, shuffling around all their equipment, uh, stuff like that. Okay. Not a good way to start off my video, but I get it. Um, and the last thing, somebody brought their poles in the in the shelter. And yeah, there's room for them. But she leaned them up against the wall. And in the middle of the night, one of them fell over and hit me like right near the eye. And, you know, woke me up with a start. So I wasn't very happy for that. Um, it's just, it's not a no, it's not a Nobo versus Sobo thing. But we've been on the trail for long enough. We know that you don't, you just go to bed when you go to bed. You know, you go to bed early, you wake up early, and you move on. <clears throat> and I, and so I, I just, I just want, you know, people to know that <clears throat> if you're new to the trail, whether you're going northbound or southbound, have respect for other people. Don't, don't 
like don't think this is your own home it's everybody is sharing this shelter you know last night it was thunder and lightning and it rained you know a lot of the night and then it got really windy um everybody's sharing this this resource but some people are just thinking that it's their resource and like they they have no respect for other people or at least they don't see they're not seeing it then they're not seeing that this is you know not just for them so there's my gripe for the day I've got about probably now eight and a half miles to get to uh, over Mariah and down to Gorham and hopefully I can fix my sleeping pad and uh, yeah and then um, my wife will come in later for she's gonna visit for the afternoon for dinner so that'll that'll be nice um, anyhow that's all I got right now we're gonna move forward Thanks for listening to my gripe. And let me know if if I'm just, you know, talking out of turn. I mean, if you've done the trail before, uh, let me know if it's something where you've experienced it or if I'm just, you know, overblowing this. Anyhow, there you go. I'll see you up trail. Lies ahead. and the White Mountains. I'm on the top of Mount Moriah, which is the last of the, the White Mountains that we're gonna hit. The last 4,000 footer. So after this, we're saying goodbye to the White Mountains. I will be down to the town in about five or six miles. But yeah, there's the grand peaks over there are all hidden in the clouds but then these are the car the carters in front of us in the back of in the back there is uh the wildcats but yeah this is uh this is it this is the last peak and then i'm guessing all that over there is maine so we've made it this far. Now it's time to go downhill again. I think it's pretty much downhill to the town. But we'll see. All right, off we go. Well, the trail ended and I am here in Gorham. Now at the, I don't know. It's an inn, so motel um, at Gorham. We're got a bunch of people in the room. Uh, it was a pretty uneventful day after the Mount Moriah summit. Um, so we're gonna hang around here and spend time cleaning up. I'll do some YouTube videos to try to catch up, clean up, do some laundry and get ready the next three days are going to uh are designed to get past the mahusik notch and mahusik arm which will be um very difficult days so we're trying to schedule it so that we can <clears throat> get past those and not uh not come into it too tired or have too long of a day before we get into um the Mahusiks. And then from there, we will recalibrate and see what we need to do uh, going forward. But it looks like we're starting to talk about when we think we can finish. My initial thought was um, just based purely on numbers, not on terrain or anything. Um, I was expecting to do five months, which would be August 5th. And it looks like even after all the pluses and minuses and short days going through the White Mountains, uh, it will be most likely that week, somewhere between the 4th and the 10th. And that's kind of the first time that we could really see a finish line um, with this whole thing. It's like always been, oh, I'm 
you know, always been like, you know, oh, I'm ahead of schedule, behind schedule. We have 299 miles to go. Uh, tomorrow we actually cross over the 1900 mile mark. Uh, we're at 1898.4. So we'll cross over that and um, I'll be good. So that's kind of, kind of an update on where this group is. There's six of us that are six or seven that are kind of hanging around with together as a as a family and we're all in cahoots on miles and what we're doing and all that so it's very uh it's a very fluid thing but everybody is kind of coming together and being part of the plan which is really nice uh because we all want to have a successful finish and we can all raise our arms up on the top of Katahdin that's the ultimate goal so we have to be careful a lot of work ahead of us but under 300 miles as of today so super stoked with that and I believe it's the end of day 134 but I've been totally messing up the day so uh, I'll see you guys tomorrow thanks for watching